Good afternoon. My name is Ndumiso Kringo. I'll be chairing this uh, session, this special session this afternoon. Thank you for joining us in this special session of the CSIR 75 conference. It is titled Celebrating 75 Years of the United Nations and Reviewing 25 Years of the United Nations Development Program. The CSR and the UNDP have had a very good but relatively low key relationship in the past. And the two organizations have recently taken steps to elevate this relationship to a strategic level to enable us to collaborate and to achieve our respective organizations' uh, mandates and objectives. This special session is in recognition of this growing import, the growing importance of this relationship and its gravitas. In 2019, the South African, South Africa celebrated 25 years of democracy. The United Nations Development Program South Africa undertook a review of its work in improving the lives of South, African, South Africans over the past 25 years and its contribution towards the Sustainable Development Goals. As part of the UNDP, or the United Nations 75th anniversary celebrations, UNDP South Africa will be presenting its 25-year highlight reel showcasing its importance within society through its various programs, including inclusive, just, and sustainable economic growth, effective, efficient, and trans transformative governance, as well as climate resilience and sustainability. This special session today will be structured in three parts. The first part will be a video that introduces the United Nations Development Program. The second, rather, this will be followed by a short uh, speech by Dr. Um, Ayodele Odusola, the resident representative of the UNDP in South Africa. The second part will be a video highlighting the 25 years of achievements of the UNDP in South Africa and the programs that it plans for the coming future. And the last part will be a question and answer session. And with that, I would like to welcome everyone to this session and ask that the video be played now. The United Nations Development Program, or UNDP, is one of 17 UN agencies working in South Africa. The contribution of the UN to the country's development aspirations is articulated in the New Generation Cooperation Framework, renamed United Nations Sustainable Development Cooperation Framework, or UNSDCF, as outlined under the UN reforms. Drawing from the UNSDCF 2020 to 2025, the UNDP Country Program Document, or CPD, for the same time frame, will contribute to the attainment of the following government priorities. Priority 1. Building a capable, ethical development state. Priority 2. Economic transformation and job creation. Priority 6 social cohesion and safe communities, and priority seven, a better world. The UNSDCF has four strategic priorities of which UNDP will contribute to three. One, inclusive, just, and sustainable economic growth. Two, effective, efficient, and transformative governance. And three, climate resilience and sustainably managed natural resources. 
These three overarching priorities will shape the UNDP-CPD for 2020-2025 through six outcome areas. The centerpiece of the CPD is youth empowerment, with a significant consideration of gender and people living with disabilities. The focus on youth is prompted by the high youth unemployment rate and the fact that with more employment generated, poverty and inequality will decrease. One of the key contributions of the UN in South Africa is the support to domesticate or localize international conventions, declarations and protocol. These cover a myriad of sectors and some of them include the Millennium Development Goals, its successor, the Sustainable Development Goals, Agenda 2030, the AU's Agenda 2063, and other sectoral ones like the Paris Declaration and Human Rights Convention. UNDP, in the role as SDG's integrator within the UN, was the interlocutor between the UN and the government during the formulation of the medium-term strategic framework in 2019, ensuring that the UN's support to the planning process and inputs are coordinated and harmonized. The same leadership was demonstrated in the identification of the National SDGs Indicators, the 2019 National Voluntary Report and the South Africa SDGs Country Report 2019. UNDP, in collaboration with the Department for Planning, Monitoring and Evaluation, developed a report mapping the NDP to the SDGs and Agenda 2063. All these products create a baseline on the implementation of the SDGs in South Africa, as well as identifying challenges, bottlenecks and opportunities that should be embraced for the accelerated implementation of the SDGs and Agenda 2063. UNDP support to policy is also conducted through knowledge products and evidence-based research, like the 2004 Human Development Report on HIV AIDS. This report contributed in orienting focus on the disease and how its impact extends beyond health to other development areas. The 2018 Behavioural Insight Study on Bystanderism created an understanding on why people do not act in a timely fashion when they suspect that gender-based violence is occurring. The report is also a call to action for the public. The Socio-Economic Impact Assessment of COVID-19 Study and the Rapid Emergency Needs Assessment form part of such knowledge products to support the government policy and decision-making directed towards supporting the most vulnerable during crises and to build resilience. In its 25 years of development work in South Africa, the United Nations Development Programme, or UNDP, has been consistently working toward achieving far-reaching impacts on the livelihoods and quality of life of South Africans. UNDP offers bespoke programmatic interventions in key strategic priority areas. This includes inclusive, just and sustainable economic growth, effective, efficient and transformative governance and climate resilience and sustainably managed natural resources. The Inclusive Growth Programme seeks to respond to the triple challenges of unemployment, inequality and poverty by working with government to support inclusive economic participation and provide growth opportunities for youth and women. UNDP has been at the forefront of development in the areas of entrepreneurship and digital technologies education programmes, efficient social grants system, social protection for South Africa, implementation of the Rural Television White Space Network Operator Support Program, support to informal traders and SMMEs during the COVID-19 pandemic, and creating a Youth Entrepreneurship Action Hub. UNDP further supports government in strengthening service delivery and democratic governance 
through interventions that address the medium-term strategic priorities as well as the national development outcomes. The program contributes to strengthening service delivery and promoting democratic governance and to build a capable, ethical and developmental state that is fit for purpose. It seeks to do this by number one, supporting the consolidation of public sector reforms through targeted institutional strengthening across all sectors of governance through leadership development, innovations and improved planning. Number two, supporting oversight and accountability mechanisms and promotion of good governance practices through capacity strengthening of legislative and oversight institutions like the Public Service Commission and Parliament. And three, deepening public participation and accountability through civic education, including the involvement of women and youth in local governance. More than 800 public servants have already benefited from ethical leadership and anti-corruption approaches, which enabled them to strengthen the capacity of the state and increase accountability. UNDP influenced the revamping of the Leadership Development and Orientation Program of the Public Service Commission. UNDP also advocated for the use of foresighting tools for labor market planning, provincial budgeting, and resource allocation in a tight fiscal environment in the Eastern Cape. This resulted in an increased use of foresighting for medium-term planning, starting with a review of the format for strategic plans by the provincial treasury. Over 50,000 government officials and community members of 10 wards in the Tulamela municipality in the Vembe district in Limpopo province access a communication platform aimed at improving service delivery through simplified communication between government and citizens. 86% of first-time voters who registered to vote turned up to exercise their democratic right. While this is an achievement, there is still much to do to encourage first-time voters to participate in the democratic process. Addressing climate change and greening South Africa's economy has been at the forefront of UNDP's work to unleash the transformative potential of a green economy and address structural imbalances that cause unemployment and livelihood vulnerability. Through this program, UNDP supports government's ongoing efforts to meet commitments under the three Rio Conventions toward combating land degradation, biodiversity loss and climate change. The program has achieved this through strong partnerships, in particular with funding from the Global Environment Facility, or GEF, which has resulted in over 25 projects to the total value of over 100 million US dollars. Through climate change advocacy, sound knowledge management and capacity building for informed decision making, we have seen a marked impact on the ground. UNDP is committed to ensure that South Africa is on a just transition to a low carbon society and vulnerable and marginalized communities are more resilient to adverse effects of climate change. Some of the projects under this program include enhancing climate change mitigation and adaptation under UNDP's Climate Promise and ensuring an inclusive approach in national climate strategies and actions through Mission 1.5 initiative. Support to the biodiversity economy through access and benefit sharing with community-based initiatives and SMMEs. Sustainable land management to address land degradation and improve ecosystem services for livelihood improvement in agriculture. Enhancing biodiversity management through protected area expansion and mainstreaming biodiversity into land use regulation. On international waters, UNDP works toward the sustainable management of transboundary surface and groundwater systems, 
enhancing capacity for sustainable energy for all, including support to the South African Wind Energy Project and reduction in South Africa's GHG emissions through energy efficiency, and enable partnerships and improve access to sustainable financing for biodiversity, sustainable use of natural resources and ecological restoration. Gender equality is also an important part of development progress and a prerequisite to advance human development. It is central to the mandate of UNDP. Gender is therefore mainstreamed in all UNDP's program areas. The Gender Equality and HIV AIDS program is geared towards supporting government to create an enabling human rights environment that promotes gender equality and women's empowerment, addresses HIV-related stigma and discrimination, promotes access to justice, reviews and reforms legislation, and enforces protective laws. Current work focuses on the following themes. Women Leadership Project in partnership with National Treasury, the role of bystanders in GBV prevention, and building the capacity of judicial officers on gender, human rights, HIV, and the law. UNDP also works toward promoting South-South cooperation. A key milestone in this regard was supporting the South African government by contributing toward relief efforts in the United Republic of Tanzania following the 2016 Kagera earthquake. Several schools and health facilities have been rehabilitated and constructed and waiting to be officially launched after the Tanzanian elections. The UNDP Accelerator Lab is a new offering at UNDP that seeks to reimagine development for the 21st century. The Accelerator Lab identifies new ways of developing solutions that go beyond business as usual by combining expertise and solution mapping, making use of the collective intelligence and experimentation, the Accelerator Lab aims to unveil ways of solving South Africa's most pressing challenges. Since its launch in January 2020, the Accelerator Lab has been engaged in several projects, including enhancing water security and access through local innovation, COVID-19 relief and recovery measures by supporting local businesses, social protection studies, and local PPE manufacturing. Improving food security through sustainable household gardens and digital applications to map vulnerable households and deliver food vouchers to those in need. Enhancing digital inclusivity through the rollout of low-cost internet and online education platforms promoting positive youth engagement and employment through an online reward system and leveraging South Africa's biodiversity through explorative studies on seaweed applications. Thank you for that video. It is now my pleasure to introduce uh, the next speaker, Dr. Ayodele Odusola, who is the resident representative of the UNDP in South Africa. Dr. Odusola is a former chief economist and head of strategy and analysis for the UNDP Regional Bureau for Africa in New York. Dr. Odusola assumed his current position as UNDP resident representative in South Africa in June 2019. He is no stranger to South Africa, having served as senior economics for UNDP South Africa more than a decade ago, before he assumed office in New York. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Odusola. Dr. Odusola, over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson, Dr. Ndemiso, and good afternoon, participants, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. 
Uh, let me start off by expressing my pleasure to spend this afternoon with you on these two celebrations. First, my congratulations to the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, CSIR, on the celebration of its 75th anniversary. Throughout these years, CSR, CSIR has been instrumental in pushing uh, research and innovation frontier in Africa. CSR's commitment in South Africa to, reach, uh, to, to, to undertake practical research and innovation technology uh, to proactively impact lives and well being of people is highly applauded. And UNDP is joining uh, well wishes today to really congratulate CSIR in its laudable uh, achievements over the past 75 years. I just want to really use this opportunity again to say, while CSIR is celebrating its 75th anniversary, uh, it is really a happy moment uh, to know that uh, it is coinciding with the same year of birth of the United Nations system 75 years ago. And uh, again, we are glad to be partner with CSIR in promoting sustainable development, diversity, tolerance, and social cohesion across the world, in promoting inclusive growth where the most impoverished uh, is not only benefiting in the growth process, but also part and parcel of development across the world. I just want to really say that uh, Achieving the opportunity and the capacity to really, uh, uh, for people to achieve what they call meaningful life is one of the things that UNDP is partnering across the world to achieve in our uh, countries where we operate. The United Nations system over the past 75 years has achieved profound successes. First, it has succeeded in avoiding the third, world, the third World War, particularly wars between major powers of the world. Second, it has succeeded in advocating political freedom that helped to demolish colonialism across the world, which made its membership to rise from just about 40 when it was established 75 years ago to about 200 as we speak now. Third, it has succeeded in raising advocacy and political actions that contributed to enhanced well being for the world, uh, to reduce uh, uh, poverty and inequality, to have access to water and sanitation, and to reduce famine across the world. These achievements are among unacknowledged triumphs of our lifetime made by the United Nations all over the world but not uh, duly acknowledged. But I just want to underscore that these are among several achievements that the United Nations system has been able to achieve. Today, we present an overview of UNDP support to South Africa's development since the country's independence in 1994. UNDP's work in South Africa spans across our three main areas of programmatic interventions, namely inclusive growth and development, two, governance and strengthening institutions, three, climate change, energy and environment. While implementing programs in these development areas, UNDP is deliberate to ensure that the most impoverished and uh, and those that are marginalized are reached and impacted positively. Whether these are the marginalized in the urban centers or in rural areas. And to promote accountability in governance, both at the government as well as the corporate level. Most importantly, UNDP ensures total ownership by government with no parallel system. UNDP is in South Africa to support the government and people of South Africa to contribute to achieving its development priorities, particularly 
in addressing the triple development challenges of poverty, inequality, and unemployment. Our recently developed uh, country prog program, which was approved in June, uh, is one of the things we intend to really work with the government and people of South Africa to achieve these development priorities. And these are development initiatives that originated from the National Development Plan, the Vision 2030, the Medium Term Strategic Framework, as well as the Sustainable Development Goals. The upcoming videos will present the program that UNDP has developed and implemented in South Africa over the past 25 years. But I just want to underscore some of the salient things that UNDP has succeeded in working with the government and people of South Africa to achieve. The first one is the democratic struggle that led to the end of apartheid in 1994. Second is uh, 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 our rollout of the United Nations volunteer medical doctors in rural provinces like Mpumalanga and Limpopo, which was helped to really transform lives in many communities as we speak today. There also the issue of partnership with many other government institutions, including SAWA, South African Wind Energy Project, that led to the first set of wind energy in South Africa. Also, the, the, the partnership with so many other actors uh, in, in, the, in the country, particularly in measuring human development progress since 1994 to date. And it's really a very, very big pleasure working with our various partners in accomplishing this. Even as COVID-19 struck early this year, UNDP decided to turn the COVID crisis into economic opportunities by working with our various partners in making this a reality. Among critical aspects of this is the partnership with informal tailors, which we are developing the capacity of informal tailors to be able to recover from COVID-19, for them to be able to produce quality masks and provide to communities that cannot afford them. Also is the issue of making sure that uh, now we, we work with young entrepreneurs to be able to survive and compete effectively in order to generate jobs in the society. We're also supporting young entrepreneurs that are technology-based to be able to invent and innovate things that will help us to manage COVID-19, which we did in partnership with uh, Shimola Home Center of University of Johannesburg. We're working with CSR, IR, in providing rural internet access to small-scale enterprises, an initiative which we intend to really continue to partner, partner with all other actors of government and private sector to ensure that the issue of access to data in rural area is really achieved. Given the high unemployment rate, where over 60% of those unemployed are under 35 years of age. Efforts to reduce poverty and inequality in South Africa must create unemployment opportunities for the youth. With this realization, facilitating youth employment opportunities and entrepreneurship development with a strong consideration of gender and persons with disability is an enterprise that UNDP is intent to really work with government and people of South Africa to achieve. The 2019 UNDP Global Human Development Report, Beyond Income, Beyond Averages, Beyond Today, Inequality in Human Development in the 21st Century, highlighted the importance of us focusing on these critical factors that perpetuate inequality and will continue to do so in the coming decades. Climate change, education, and technology. This assessment, I will note, was conducted before COVID-19, after COVID-19 made its impact across the globe. The UN conducted a study on the socioeconomic impact of COVID-19 in South Africa. Under the technical leadership of UNDP, 
showing that those who had no or limited access to technology were more adversely affected by COVID-19 than those who had the, I mean, access to technology. We are working with various actors, particularly the Council for Scientific Industrial Research to ensure that technology innovation is deeply promoted across the urban and rural communities in the country. UNDP is determined to work with the government and stakeholders to transform uh, the current slow growth economy into accelerated economy that will generate the needed jobs for our youth and engage them meaningfully. I just want to really underscore the fact that our partnership with CSIR is in line to achieving this particular goal. These initiatives we have been working over uh, the, past, the past 25 years and those we are working under the COVID era is for us to really promote inclusive growth that will help us to generate the needed job for us to dead poverty and inequality. And we are ready to really continue this initiative with the new enhanced partnership strategy we have with the Council for Scientific Industrial Research. And I want to use this opportunity of your 75th anniversary to promote a renewed partnership, to promote a, 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 an accelerated partnership that goes beyond the shore of South Africa. The capacity of the Council for Scientific Industrial Research can serve as a pace setter for innovations and technology, technological advancement in Africa. And we are ready to work with the Council to be able to serve as a pace setter, not only in Africa, but across the world. I once again congratulate the Council for Scientific Industrial Research on their anniversary and retreat UNDP's commitment to partnership to advance social and economic development as well as welfare of the people of, in, uh, in South Africa. The alignment in the two institutions anniversary is not by accident. The goals and objective of CSIR are far beyond the shore of South Africa, like I mentioned. In this regard, the partnership with UNDP will help the, to shift CSIR frontier of innovation from South Africa to Af Africa and to the rest of the world, with a view to helping the government to achieve its vision of South Africa for better Africa. UNDP is committed to working with CSR to achieve this long-term vision. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Chair, over to you. Uh, appreciative of the very kind words that you have uh, said about the CSIR. We also extend um, our congratulations to the United Nations on its 75th anniversary, as well as the United Nations Development Programme in South Africa on its 25 years of achievements and support to socio-economic development in South Africa. We uh, reiterate our organizational commitment to developing this mutually beneficial strategic relationship that is emerging between our organizations for the benefit of South Africa and the African continent in general. We would like to assure you that we will work hard to make sure that all the programs that we are currently discussing and developing will be executed to the best of our ability and to the benefit of South Africa and the continent. I should add that the uh, ICT program for SMMEs that you spoke about, about um, has generated quite a lot of excitement uh, within the organization and I believe also within the United Nations Development Program and it promises to be one of those flagship programs that achieve impact of uh, giving access to connectivity to rural and underserved uh, areas. Once again, Thank you very much for the kind words and thank you for sharing with us the vision of United Nations Development Programme. Let us now move to the next 
say, phase of uh, this uh, session, part two. And this part, we'll start first with a video. This video is a United Nations Development Program video that was compiled as a result of the 25 years of UNDP uh, in South Africa. It speaks to the achievements of the UNDP in South Africa over the last 25 min years, but also, more importantly, and I think uh, more relevantly now, the programs that UNDP is preparing for now and going into the future. Can we play the video, please? 2019 marked 25 years since South Africa transitioned from an apartheid state to a democratic dispensation. 1994 was more than just a shift in political power and ideology. It signaled hope and displayed the resilience of the human spirit. The United Nations General Assembly approved the credentials of the South African delegation and removed the item on apartheid from its agenda. South Africa's first democratically elected president, Nelson Mandela, signed the Standard Basic Assistance Agreement that formalized South Africa's recipient status with the United Nations Development Program. For the past 25 years, UNDP has proven to be a trusted partner to the government and people of South Africa. The agency's priorities have been consistently aligned to government's national goals and aspirations. UNDP has over the years tailored its support and responses through programs designed to boost job creation, youth employment, income generation, enhancing transparency and accountability in government, fostering gender equality and social cohesion, and resolving the complex issue of land rights and distribution. Here are some of the key milestones of UNDP in South Africa in the last 25 years. An early success for UNDP was the Southern African Botanical Diversity Network Project, which emerged as a model project for South-South cooperation and regional project coordination. It covered 10 countries and focused on strengthening institutions and human capacities in plant biodiversity recordal systems in museums and research organizations to support evidence-based conservation efforts. UNDP's Global Environment Fund's Small Grants Program started in 2001 and has since delivered more than 120 projects through the provision of technical and financial support. Up to 50,000 US dollars in funding has been granted to communities and civil society organizations for conservation and environmental activities designed to restore the surrounding environment as well as benefit people's livelihoods. In 2003, UNDP supported the rollout of 500 solar water heaters for low-income households in peri-urban areas. This produced the report titled Economic Impact Analysis of Meeting Energy Efficiency Requirements of Electric Wafer Heaters. In 2005, the development and implementation of the South African National Biodiversity Strategy and Action Plan was finalized. It later became the foundation for the country's National Biodiversity Framework. This framework catalyzed the mainstreaming of biodiversity initiatives and integrated approaches associated with the implementation of the Convention on Biological Diversity. The strong relationship between UNDP South Africa and the Global Environment Facility, or GEF, 
led to the convening of the 2006 Jeff Assembly in Cape Town. UNDP's early work on governance supported the KwaZulu-Natal Public Service Training Academy. UNDP set up the KZN Nerve Center in the office of the Premier. The interactive nerve center is a fully functional automated monitoring and evaluation system to enhance governance and service delivery in the province. Support also included sharing planning tools with public servants like foresighting and horizon scanning and the development of monitoring and evaluation systems. Agency innovation is exemplified by the work with the Independent Electoral Commission of South Africa. The partnership focused on new approaches towards civic education, enhancing the participation of youth and women in electoral processes and the adoption of new technologies to ensure greater electoral integrity. With concerns regarding a lack of transparency and accountability and an increase in corruption within governance, UNDP turned its efforts to focus on supporting South Africa to foster ethical leadership. This is best reflected through the Ethical Leadership Development Program offered in partnership with the Public Service Commission of South Africa. Phase one of the South African Wind Energy Program was launched in 2007. This helped the country harness its abundant wind energy potential and make wind power commercially viable. The program remains in operation under the auspices of the Department of Mineral Resources and Energy. It's in its second phase of creating green jobs, increased energy production from renewable sources, and greater energy efficiency remains a key area of focus. The project is also training wind turbine service technicians, 37% of whom are women, and also piloting a mini-grid wind power system coupled with an existing solar PV and battery storage mini-grid in the upper Blinkwater village in the Eastern Cape. Ahead of the historic 2010 Soccer World Cup, UNDP launched the report Sustainable Public Transport and Sport 2010 Opportunity. In the same year, UNDP South Africa partnered with Stats SA to produce the Millennium Development Goals Country Report, which was presented to the special plenary session of the UN General Assembly. The agency has provided technical support in the drafting of numerous policy papers, many of which have been enacted into law. These include the Green Paper on Land Reform in 2011 and the Land Tenure Security for Commercial Farming Areas Policy and the extension of the Tenure Amendment Act enacted seven years later. In 2011, UNDP initiated market transformation through energy efficiency standards and labeling of appliances. This continued until 2017 with a goal to reduce electricity consumption and therewith greenhouse gas emissions. In 2012, UNDP strengthened fire management in four communities around the Feinbos biome through a program aimed at reducing disaster risks from wildland fire hazards associated with climate change. FireWise Communities was born out of this initiative. On youth employment, UNDP commissioned a report in 2013 titled Analysis of Youth Employment Databases in South Africa. The study profiled youth registered in three unemployment databases to better understand the drivers of youth unemployment. A second study on youth unemployment schemes in South Africa was also commissioned. This resulted in the Comprehensive Handbook, a guide to establishing business incubators in South Africa. The focus on youth employment and entrepreneurship intensified in 2019, when the country office launched the South African Youth Entrepreneurship Challenge Fund under the name Youth Entrepreneurship Action Hub. This program provides catalytic funding and market exposure to innovative solutions developed by youth 
targeted at creating job opportunities for young people. This program, I can take on that mountain now with a lot of confidence. We have been able to redefine our business model to make sure that we give our customers the best possible product. The dream for the business is to see uh, small to medium businesses in the informal sector thriving uh, by collecting revenue for their businesses to grow. Now I am able to, to negotiate, to make decisions, to do the deal because of the program. And then the knowledge that they give us, now I feel more confident. In 2015, UNDP partnered to launch the OR Tambo debate series on the National Development Plan. Here, UNDP convened a range of participants and stakeholders to share valuable insight on development pathways. This was a significant year as it was also the year in which the Sustainable Development Goals were signed into effect and endorsed by South Africa. 2015 was also the year when South Africa joined the Partnership for Action for a Green Economy. Since then, UNDP together with ILO, UNEP, UNIDO, UNITA and the Department of Environment, Forestry and Fisheries, as well as other partners, have been collaborating, coordinating and supporting policy implementation in the green economy space. An example is the creation of a social dialogue on just transition and accelerating reforms related to green industry, green economy progress measurement, trade water and renewable energy. 2019 also marked 25 years of support to the Orange Senku River Basin Commission, which integrates water resources management between Botswana, Namibia, Lesotho and South Africa for the sustainability and conservation of surface and groundwater systems of key strategic water source areas. 2019 was no doubt a year of milestones for UNDP South Africa. It saw the launch of a global network of 60 UNDP accelerator labs across several countries globally. As one of the countries selected to host an accelerator lab, UNDP South Africa worked with a range of key stakeholders to collaborate on a range of initiatives aimed at developing critical capacities and identifying, testing and supporting innovation to help fast track the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals. Innovation is the name of the game. Improving communication between citizens and government is one of the priorities of the governance program at UNDP. Therefore, supporting the implementation of Let's Talk Batopile, a platform using technology for citizen-generated data regarding service delivery issues, was a defining step for UNDP's integration with local government. More than 50,000 government officials and community members of 10 wards in the Tulamela municipality in the Vembe district in Limpopo province access this communication platform. In addition, since 2019, UNDP has been contributing to the global knowledge base on biodiversity financing and access to genetic resources and benefit sharing through the Biodiversity Finance Initiative and the Global ABS Projects. Two projects focusing on development of value chains for products derived from genetic resources and leapfrogging South Africa's markets to high efficiency LED lighting and high efficiency distribution transformer are also in their initial phases. 2020 marks the decade of action toward the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals and Agenda 2030. It also marks 75 years of the existence of the United Nations. But the year also brought with it a global pandemic. South Africa was not spared. We see every day how the COVID-19 pandemic is fundamentally changing the country's development agenda and creating uncertainties about the collective path back to safety, security and well-being. To respond to this devastation, the government of South Africa moves swiftly and firmly to put measures in place 
to help curb the virus and strengthen the health system. UNDP too stepped up and supported government's COVID-19 response by one, strengthening the health system through the procurement of medical supplies, including personal protective equipment. Two, supporting the National Disaster Management Center in its coordination role by providing technical assistance to immediately develop tools for information gathering among the different government bodies, civil society organizations, and other stakeholders and establish a comprehensive database on challenges faced and response provided by each sector and existing gaps. And three, addressing the human rights and socioeconomic impact of COVID-19 by assisting in the recovery of micro and small businesses with a focus on those owned by youth and women in the most vulnerable townships. Before the advent of COVID-19, 2020 was meant to be a super year for nature, conservation and climate action. This year marked the official start of the implementation of the Paris Agreement, as well as the UN Decade of Ecosystem Restoration. In the run-up to the Climate Conference COP26, which has been postponed to November 2021, UNDP South Africa will support enhanced climate activities and ensure public participation of women and youth through the Global Climate Promise Program and the Mission 1.5 initiative. As South Africa's development landscape evolves, so too will UNDP concentrate its efforts in one, inclusive growth, employment and entrepreneurship, two, governance, institutional strengthening and capacity building, three, climate resilience, sustainably managed natural resources and greening of South Africa's economy, and four, gender, health and inclusivity. A post-COVID-19 South Africa presents an unprecedented opportunity to revive stalled growth in the country in a more sustainable, green and inclusive manner. In doing so, UNDP South Africa is committed more than ever to ensure that we reach South Africa's most vulnerable. focused on those areas of um, our country that have socio-economic impact, including the uh, biodiversity work uh, that they've done, work in uh, youth and women employment, uh, work in the wind energy uh, program, and a host, a range of other uh, uh, programs that uh, they've shared with us today. We are quite happy um, to uh, indicate that um, the current discussions that we are having with UNDP, in addition to what I mentioned earlier, um, the uh, program on uh, rural SME support for access to uh, connectivity, we are also in discussions with them on youth and women employment, uh, on the circular economy. We are also in discussions about indigenous indigenous knowledge systems as um, you would imagine that is aligned with the uh, biodiversity work as well and most importantly and current for us uh, is the work that we're uh, discussing with them about the COVID-19 response and how that um, can be uh, expanded across the country as well as rolled out into the rest of the African continent. At this stage, I would like to uh, then uh, open up 
the uh, opportunity for questions to be sent. Uh, the audience can send questions through uh, the online uh, question system. Um, at this stage, I think uh, we have received one comment. It's not a question as such. It's a more a comment. Uh, just congratulating CSR and the UNDP on working on this uh, priority project of rural connectivity. And the sender is saying that um, this is an important step in reducing the inequality that we have uh, in our country. While we're waiting for other questions to come through, perhaps I'll pose a question to Dr. Um, um, Oyudo um, Arusele. Uh, doctor, if you could perhaps uh, indulge us and uh, share your thoughts on um, how you see the, uh, the relationship with, uh, between CSIR and UNDP uh, evolving, um, more importantly, beyond the borders of South Africa into the rest of the uh, African continent. How do you see that uh, emerging and evolving? I know you have mentioned that that's a, a key priority for you. Thank you very much, Dr. Uh, Wood. I think uh, this, is, this is really great. And uh, what we are planning uh, is that we want this partnership to be a very a sounding one, uh, given the capacity of uh, CSIR, we strongly believe it can serve as a major pay setter on innovation and technological advancement on the continent. And as a result of this, we shouldn't limit this to the shore of South Africa, because we see a situation whereby leveraging that kind of innovation uh, to project development frontier in other African countries to be a way of supporting the government of South Africa to achieve the trilogy of South Africa for better Africa, South Africa for the better world. And we strongly believe with this, uh, the kind of partnership we are looking for, for instance, the one we're using on the internet, uh, rural internet access to small scale enterprises. Once it works, it, it's a really solid opportunity for us to say, okay, CSR, how can you partner with similar institutions, first in certain countries, that will be able to really promote innovations like this. Two, how can we expand, extend to other four regions in Africa, whether it's Central, whether it's Eastern, whether it's Western or Northern Africa. This is the kind of thing we intend to really work with CSIR to achieve. And there are a number of things which we strongly believe because uh, CSIR has what it takes to really transform the current in technological initiative into economic propellant, not only for South Africa, but for Africa. And as a result of this, we are willing to really see how can we work with TSR to turn some of the development challenges we have on the continent into development opportunities. And innovation and technological advancement will help us to achieve this. Uh, you can count on us because we, we have, uh, we, we're planning to really see how this partnership that we are strengthening up now will be able to develop into something that is more enduring that is highly inclusive, even bringing the private sector as well as communities into the innovation network. And that's why uh, UNDP, South Africa, established what you call the Accelerator Lab. The Accelerator Lab has a young uh, team of young stars in innovation, one focusing on experimentation, one focusing on exploration, and one focusing on mapping of solid innovation systems. And our objective is, how can we connect uh, what we call rural innovation into the national innovation ecosystem. This can only be achieved with strong partnership with CSIR, as well as the Department of Science and Innovation. And we are ready to work with you to really bring, I mean, develop this alliance into a strong partnership and collaboration that will be very transformative for South Africa and for Africa. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Doctor, for those words. And I think on that very positive and futuristic note, we would like to uh, bring this session to the end. We have run out of time. And it uh, remains uh, for me to simply uh, thank um, the resident representative to South Africa um, for 
having taken the time to share with us the um, achievements of the UNDP as well as the plans that they have for um, South Africa and the African continent. We appreciate your time and also for the videos that you've shared with us on the work that um, you have done. Uh, once again, congratulations on 25 years of uh, UNDP South Africa as well as 75 years of the United Nations. And I know uh, you will also return the congratulations to say CSR 75, thank you. Uh, but in the interest of time, I will say, let us uh, 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 conclude the program on that note. Thank you, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Odisola. Thank you very much, and congratulations too, as you have said. It's really, really great having this, uh, I'm celebrating this anniversary with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And with that, we conclude the session. Goodbye.